Good evening, everybody. Hello, and welcome to another Wild Eye webinar. Um, while you guys are joining, good evening from wherever you are. The chat function is open. Vikram, good evening. And um, I'm going to be keeping, as always, a close watch on that, so I can kind of field questions on the go and as we go. And then I will also be checking in on the Q&A as usual in between. So if you have any, hi from Connecticut, Yelena, hey. If you have any questions um, on this process we're going to be talking about now, um, whether I cover it or you already have questions, stick them in the Q&A for me and we will come back to them in between all the different sections as we come and go. Um, just waiting. I see people are still joining up. Um, Saskatchewan, Canada. Good evening. Maria. Hey, how's it going? So um, as you guys know, I'm doing a double header tonight. I'm doing this one, which is the print for wildlife photography. Kind of Talk about sharpening output, what to look for, how to choose your images for print. And then I'm going to log off at about, I can't go too much over on this one because after this, I am logging straight back on and I'm going to be looking at, um, at, at, at the new features in the latest version of Lightroom. So there's some pretty cool stuff. Some of it's pretty straightforward, but there's some cool stuff that we can work through. But I think let us get going. And hello from Irene, Belgium. Hey, Karina. So we're going to get going and we're talking print. So as always, right, as always, um, I see some of you saying that the webinars are always over dinner time. So, hey, it's like dinner and a show. It's all good. Um, and just, yes, Kyle asked, will this be recorded on YouTube soon? Yes, indeed, it will. Uh, this will be on YouTube by lunchtime tomorrow. All the free webinars, these 45-minute ones, go to uh, YouTube the very next day. Uh, Krista takes care of that for us. And then the premium ones we send to the people who join those sessions directly as a file for them to use. Uh, we are also, just for those of you that are curious, some of the, some of the webinars that uh, we've done as a premium, those two hour ones, uh, Mike's doing one on Thursday. Some people have asked, even though they didn't join, right? Even though they didn't join, that um, they're gonna have a look at it afterwards. So if you are keen, mail me, we are getting into that as well. So for now, in the chat function, please, how many of you have in the last six months printed any of your own wildlife images? Go in the chat function, please. How many printed your own images? Okay, I like it, I like it, I like it. There's quite a lot of you. Okay, this is good. This is good. Now. For those of you that have not, why not? Just give me an idea. Haven't printed for about a year. Why have you not printed any of your own images? Never printed. Not for about a year. Okay. What is your story about sizing? Procrastination. Truth. Truth. Don't know how. Okay. Mm. New printer. No place. I'm too critical of my own images. Tech issues with border not being even. Need to get a printer. Haven't found the right images yet. I think I could do better. Did buy some frames. Okay, so there's a little bit of everything there. Um, we, me, you, all of us, we need to start printing our images more. What to do with your prints? Richard, I'm going to tell you a story now. So we have to. The technical requirements. Michael, we're going to look at those tonight. So what I'm going to look at here in kind of this order, roughly, sharpening, because that's an important thing. And I'm going to show you in Lightroom what to look at for the sharpening now. That's cool. Thank you. Um, and then we look at the export settings out of Lightroom. Um, just a little bit on the ink and the paper, and then we'll look at which images can work. But here's the thing. We all, we all have incredible catalogs full of wildlife images, right? What do they do? They sit on a hard drive and they just stay there or they go onto Instagram. Instagram is not a portfolio of your work. Please don't get that wrong. I am working on the version 2.0 of our social media wildlife photography one. It's not a portfolio. You need to start doing something with your images. There is nothing as rewarding, right? Color profiles we'll touch on, yes. Um, there is nothing as rewarding as holding a piece of your own art, holding it, like for real, here it is. You can touch it. It's awesome. I was just counting now in my house right now. One, two, three, four, five. I've got six of my own prints in my house. And that is phenomenal. My mom and dad are from their house. I've given a whole bunch of prints away. It means something for your work to be printed as something real and to go out. 
Now, um, some of you, Linda, you might know Nancy, um, very regular client of ours, lovely lady. I had a chat with her once and we spoke about prints and who was saying, uh, Richard, what to do with the prints is give it away. At the end of each year, and especially to 2020, which is a disaster of a year, when we get to the end of this year, go and choose for example, and I'm being dead serious, you guys, dead serious. Go and choose about five of your own images that you think will look cool as prints, right? Print them. It can only be small. It could be this big, yeah? A4, but print them on a nice canvas or a nice fine art paper. Roll them up in a little tube. Go into a coffee shop that someone that you do not know. Go to them and say, hey, listen, you don't know me. This is for you. Give your work away. I promise you it's the best feeling in the world to know that someone has a piece of your art. It is phenomenal. I cannot urge you enough to try that. It really, really is amazing. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna jump around between a couple of programs now. The first thing I wanna show you is, just quickly for me again, please, in the chat function, how many of you use Lightroom versus Photoshop? Which, which platform do you use mostly, please? Mm -hmm. Okay, 100% Lightroom so far both okay there's one or two photoshops in there hey shazman um <clears throat> okay and how many of you have and actively use nick filters nik i've spoken about it a lot nick filters have you got it and are you using it just started no 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 okay we need to get on that it's amazing the new version version three which is released now like in the last week is Phenomenal. Carol, yes, I know. Danquitz um, was with you on, on a private today. That's great. Okay, because the reason I'm asking is, and we'll get into this detail now, there are three different kinds of sharpening. Did you know? There are three different kinds of sharpening. The first sharpening that we do inside of Lightroom is considered raw sharpening. That's base level sharpening, right? That you apply, those sliders that we do there. Then you get creative sharpening. That would be, for example, if you take a brush, either in Lightroom and or Photoshop, and you brush certain areas and you selectively sharpen, creative sharpening. And then, and this is the important one for print, is output sharpening. Now, Lightroom has a very rudimentary export dialogue when it comes to the sharpening side of it, right? But I'm gonna recommend Nick Filters. They have an output sharpener, which is insane. Really, really good, but we'll get to that. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly take you into Lightroom now because 99% of us use Lightroom. Okay, and I'm gonna just run a normal export setting. I'm just gonna talk through the export settings that you need for print, and then I'm coming back here. All right, let us go into Lightroom. Where is it? Uh, there we go. Okay, as always, guys, just please confirm you can see my Lightroom. I just wanna make sure we're all with me. You can see Lightroom, there's some waterfalls here. Okay, cool. So I've done a lot of webinars the last while. And we're not gonna talk processing now. I'm just gonna choose any of these images and I'm gonna say export. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm lying. I just wanna show you this. So when you do sharpening, right? When you do sharpening for um, any image and the detail, right? This sharpening here, this is considered raw sharpening. This is raw level sharpening, base level. So here you would do, and if you haven't yet, I've got webinars and videos on this, um, you would hear, do the whole masking thing. You would dial this up. You got the radius dialed up. So here, this is raw sharpening. Not gonna discuss this now. Get in touch or watch the other webinars to go deeper on this. Okay, what we wanna look at is once you've processed your image, you're gonna right click, export, and go up to the top here, export. Now, the dialogue that opens, this dialogue that opens, at this point, you need to know that you're going to print. Okay, because there, there's some fundamental differences between printing um, your print file and a social media or an online or digital file. Okay, from the top, export location. This for you would be, for example, print. Desktops will forward slash print. You can call it master prints, but don't mix it with other files. I've seen too many people on safaris and stuff where they would bang all these things into one folder, their social media ones, their Facebook ones, their print ones, and then it's just, they mix up and they print the wrong one, they get a shitty print quality and they think it's Lightroom's fault. Okay, keep your print files, the large ones, separate. Okay, pretty self-obvious. Next one, file naming. Okay, 
under the file naming here, what I would suggest, now this is different. If you're printing by yourself on your own printer at home, this is not as important. I still like to do this, especially if you're sending your, your file off to print. All right, um, Fiona, please ask that in the Q&A for me. Um, and then we'll get to that. So I normally include my name in it, dash sun, for example, or this would be dash Iceland, dash waterfall, for example. Okay, so this here, if I'm gonna send the file to a printer, I know it's in there. My name's in there. You're obviously gonna have your metadata and stuff in there. Just makes sense to me to have my name in. We are not going to do video, right? Because obviously, file settings, this becomes important. Now, you always want quality at 100, always. Do not limit the file size. Do not do that because it squashes quality. How many of you, and quickly in the chat for me, are 100% comfortable with what this is, color space? sRGB versus Adobe, very important. Okay, do you know what that means? sRGB versus Adobe RGB. Okay, I'm gonna run it just a very, very brief description. The internet, the digital world, online, websites, Instagram, Facebook, is sRGB, color space. Okay, Adobe RGB is for print. Now, it's got a wider color gamut. Now, what it means, if I could draw from the one side of a page to the other side, different types of blue, dark blue all the way through. If it was RGB, those would be kind of split up into, for example, example, 16 different shades of blue, sRGB. Adobe will have, for example, 64 shades of blue from the same one to the same one. So there's a deeper, richer tonal transition when it comes to Adobe RGB. Everybody happy for that? So when you print, you want, you don't want to see in the sky it go like banding. You want to have the smooth color transitions. And to have that, you need to have a wider color gamut, i.e. Adobe RGB. So for print, thanks, Paul. So um, for print, you want to go color space, Adobe RGB. Now, image format. I would normally suggest if you're going to print, you go TIFF, tagged image file format. Okay, it saves a much larger file. TIFF are much larger, larger files than JPEG. Right, if you're going to print at home, JPEG, fine. Most printers, if you give them a JPEG, fine. You can upsize if you really need to. All right, but TIFF and Adobe RGB this is kind of standard printing language. Okay, over here, 16 bits, keep it big. You don't want to compress it too much and no compression. That for me, for a general big print that I'm going to give to a fine art printer would be this. Because the easy thing is, if I give them a TIFF, the large file, they can always save it as a JPEG. I don't want them to go the other way. I'm going from raw to TIFF, not from JPEG to TIFF. Okay. Quickly, just in the, in, the, in the chat, everybody's still with me there so far. This makes sense. Important. This is important. Thanks, to a guy. Cool. All right. Happy so far. Now, moving down. Image sizing. What you see here, what I have here is how I export for Instagram. The longest edge at 2560. Important. This resolution, 72. 72 is the online world. 72 is the online world. You cannot print that at large scale. And a little bit later, I'm going to show you, there's a couple of these online, but I'll just show you one example where you can punch in the size that you want and the resolution, and it'll show you how big you can actually print that file. I'll show you that in a bit. But if you are going to print, you need to go at 300 pixels per inch. Okay, PPI. 300. PPI, and then there's DPI, we'll get to that. But for print, do not squash this down. Do not resize your image up or down in Lightroom. Lightroom's enlarging, uh, not great. And you don't wanna bring it down because you're gonna compromise print quality. So under image sizing, make sure this is not ticked and resolution, 300 PPI. Quick one, do we know the difference between PPI and DPI? In the chat, please, PPI, DPI. Important difference. PPI versus DPI. Okay, Vikram knows there's a couple. So, screen versus print, exactly. So PPI is pixels per inch, which refers to the screen you're working on. DPI is dots per inch, thanks Grace, exactly. That has to do with printing. Okay, 
Jasmine, please ask that for me in the Q&A um, Q and I'll get back to that question as well. Okay, now moving on down my settings here. Let's just recap. Keep it in a separate folder. File renaming, I would suggest you always put your name in there. It's just nice, it's your file, you dig it. File settings, okay. Um, image TIFF and Adobe RGB, okay. Um, Will, slightly deeper question, hold that thought, I'll get back to that in a second. Um, output sharpening over here. Now, this here for me is a little bit clunky in Lightroom. Let me tell you why. If you click sharpen for screen, matte or glossy, okay, where would you put canvas for example? Okay, but then, so let's say it's matte, but now I've only got low standard and high. What does that mean? Okay, what is the viewing distance? How far is someone gonna stand from your, from your um, image when they look at it? So I prefer not to use this output sharpening. Take it off, don't use it. Okay, metadata for the purposes of this discussion, um, not important for print. Obviously, if you wanna keep it and you send it to your file, you would fill everything in there. Watermarking, if you want to do a watermark on your image, this is where you would do it if you were in Lightroom. Photoshop is slightly different, right? But I did do the webinar a week or so ago on watermarking, go, go and check it out how to put that. That's up to you. And then post-processing is once this file gets exported out of Lightroom, what happens? I generally for print go straight into Adobe Photoshop, right? Because I do my, my, my um, export sharpening there using Nick filters but I'll show you that in a little bit. Okay, any questions for me? I'm gonna not hit export on this. I'm gonna come back to you guys over here. Um, am I back with you? There we go. Um, any questions on that export dialogue, please, so far? That's important. That is the main thing. We're gonna now look at sharpening specifically. All right, so far so good. Uh, Vikram, questions, go for it. So that export dialogue is stock standard. That is if you want to print, that's kind of the route that you go. We will get in a little bit which image to print because you're not going to put, for example, there's all these images of the Great Migration where a crocodile is ripping a zebra in four pieces. You're not going to put that in your dining room on the wall as a fine art print, are you? Because if you do, people might look at you funny. Some images, and some, often, quite often, a good wildlife image is not a good print image. And a good print image might not be the best Wildlife image. And we'll just look at some examples in a little bit. Okay, so um, the export, those settings out of Lightroom, pretty stock standard. There's a couple of variations. Now, the important thing is if you are going to send your print to a specific printer, right? Whether it is through Smug Mug, whether it's your printer around the corner, your Uncle John, whatever the case is, ask them the questions. What profiles, ICC profiles, do they use? Do they want a TIFF? Yeah, do they want a JPEG? Do they want RGB or CMYK if they go that deep? They will then be able to guide you. What I'm giving you here is stock standard kind of industry-wide, which you can print for yourself on your printer at home or that you can send to someone. But if you really want to go deep on this, guys, this is not a deep printing discussion. This is all the basics, yeah? Then those settings you can stick to. Okay, so now I'm going to quickly take you into Photoshop and I want to show you the sharpening inside of Nick filters, which to me is one of the best ones that I've seen. Okay, into Photoshop we go. Where are you? Photoshop's over here. Okay, um, sorry guys, just once more, please confirm for me that you can see this Iceland image in Photoshop, just to make sure the screen sharing, because sometimes it goes off. Fantastic, thank you. Okay, now, for the purposes of this exercise, let's assume that we've just done this particular image and we wanted to print this. Okay, if you have the new Nick Filters 3, the latest version, you will get this menu system that you can put inside of Photoshop. Very handy compared to the previous ones, right? It takes a sim single click on any of these to open up that filter as a new layer in Photoshop. I've also done basic Photoshop as a webinar. You can go check out on layers over there. Okay. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just click on, okay, let me close this. I'm gonna show you, you can also do it in here. Filters, Nick Collection, and there they are as well. Okay, so you can also access them in here. Now, these two over here, there are two sharpeners inside of Nick Filters. 
raw pre-sharpener and output sharpener. Okay, if you're gonna use the raw pre-sharpener, that would be at the early stages of your workflow when you've just opened that raw file, right? And you can do this in, in, in Lightroom as well. I've got the webinars on that as well. You can go check that out. If you do the pre-sharpening raw stuff, that's early on in the phase. Then you would complete, then you would do creative sharpening. And when you're ready to export your file that's ready to go to print, then we're going to run this. The Sharpener Pro Output Sharpener. Here we go. Click that. Okay. Can you all see this new interface, please, just to confirm? Can you all see that? All right. So this is the stock standard. If you're watching a lot of my webinars, you'll know that this is the, the stock standard kind of NIC interface, right? With the line going across. I can drag before, I can drag after. But what's interesting here, let me just bring this down a little bit, is the output sharpening over here. Now, this is, you can do this for screen as well inside here if you really want to go deep on your, on your online processing. But here you decide where do you want it to go. Display, what type of printer are you going to use? Inkjet, continuous, half tone, or hybrid? 90% of you will probably be using inkjet. Okay? And then it gives you this. Now, this becomes important. Viewing. Auto, you can leave, and it kind of goes for a happy middle of the road medium. What's cool here is you can say, right, how far, and this, is, this becomes an important thing, how far are people average going to stand away from your image on the wall when they look at it? And this is important because if someone's going to stand yay close right here, okay, then they're going to see if it's not sharp or if it's pixelated or whatever the case might be. If it's a print like up on the wall over there, then looking further away, it looks much better. So generally for small rooms, 1.8 to 3, otherwise 3 plus meters. Okay, it then takes into account, watch what happens when I slide. Can you see how much heavier the sharpness is? Because now it's further away, it has to show more detail. Okay, next one down. What type of paper are you going to use? Textured fine art, which I can highly recommend. It, I mean, when you hold that print, I mean, angels weep when you see your own image on a beautiful piece of fine art paper. It is beautiful, right? Canvas, a lot of people, when they start playing around, use canvas, which is fine. Plain paper, which is a normal photo paper, matte, luster, and glossy. So here now you can decide what paper do you have? And if you're printing at home, you can simply just um, look in the box, yeah? Or when you order your print, you'll have these options. Let's say we're going to canvas for now. And then the printer. Now, either you will be printing this at home, so you'll know what your printer resolution is, or you can ask your printer where you're going to do it, what kind of printer resolution are they using? And you can either put in your defined here. Let's just stay stock standard for there for now. Okay. If I now bring you back, just to show you over here what's happened. This left-hand side is before sharpening. And if I swipe this over, over there. Now, this will look over sharpened on the screen because it's sharpened for print. Canvas, right? You all know canvas. I mean, I've got canvas up here as well. It's kind of rough. So by over sharpening and the roughness adds to it, it adds a beautiful texture. These things need to be kept in mind, right? Okay. Now let's change this just out of interest to see how sharp this is there. Okay. Um, let's say, for example, we go to People are going to stand really close to your prints. They're going to be right here. Okay. See how little sharpening gets applied now. Because if someone is really, really close, yeah, they're going to see if it's over sharpened. So that viewing distance really is important. It really is important. Okay. So this output sharpen for me, of all the prints and stuff that I've done, when I've worked with this here, works the most phenomenal way. You can keep going here, right? So let's just say standard is three meters plus, which will be very heavy sharpening, right? You can keep going down here and play more. How much output sharpening? So if you really want to overcook it or you're going to go way big and way far, structure, local contrast, focus, you can still play with all of this, okay? And then if you want to selectively sharpen, you can add control points and just do the ice, for example. But I would suggest you do all of that during your creative sharpening. One more time, Out, uh, raw pre-sharpening, creative sharpening, 
output sharpening. So I would do the selective sharpening that this thing wants us to do, I would do earlier on. Okay, so this is Sharpener Pro neck filters, highly recommended. Highly, highly recommended. Okay, I'm gonna come back to you guys for a second here. Um, let me get rid of this. Okay, back with you. All right, I'm gonna go to Q&A quickly. Let's run through some of those. And then let's go and play around a bit and see what images might potentially work for print. Okay, opening Q&A, here we go. Um, Q&A. Okay, Elizabeth, will you talk about what to look for in a printer and what to steer away from? Thank you. Okay, um, I would reverse engineer it, Liz. I would look at and say, right, for me, the biggest thing, it would probably be an inkjet if you're printing at home, but how wide can you print? So if it's a small A4, I've got a little A4 thing here, so I can only do literally up to this size, or if I'm gonna do a very long one, right, like this, okay? So some of the ones you can get quite wide. So the width of the print that it can produce for me is quite important. Um, and then inkjet for me, there's so little to choose at our level. Liz, when you start printing at home, I wouldn't go top of the range initially. Save your money, rather buy more ink and try and produce more prints than go for top of the range and kind of just sit with this thing. So there's many amazing brands. Go for inkjet, look for the width. Um, if you want to email me, Liz, you've got my email address. I can maybe just give you one or two particular recommendations depending on what you want to do. Okay, Lucas asks, do you calibrate your screen to achieve accurate results? Absolutely, we were getting to that. The idea there is, um, if you're gonna do a print, you wanna make sure that the green, where's the green? The green in Yoda's face is gonna be the same green on your print as what you saw on your screen. So screen calibration, vital, vital, vital. You can take it in for companies to do, or you can do it yourself. What we sometimes used to do is rent um, one of those things that you plug it on, you stick it in, and then it does the calibration of the screens, and we would just do the whole office, brrr, do all of them, right? But yes, screen calibration, vital to get color printing out. Maybe if we ever do more an advanced one and we go deeper into this, we can look at that, but just Google screen calibration, definitely worth a look. Alyssa asks, watermark for prints versus hand signatures. Okay, I'm old school. I like to sign a print. There it is, bam, put your print on it because you're proud of it, right? So if I'm sending someone a digital print overseas, I will put a white frame around it digitally. I'll show you now if you guys are keen how, and then I would, in Photoshop or in Lightroom, just add my signature at the bottom. So I will have a PNG file with my signature added to the bottom right. But there really is something to take one of your own prints and put that signature on. So if I can, hand signature, otherwise a watermark in today's world is also perfectly fine. Um, Yelena says, I'm guessing you're gonna cover this, but what about if you're using Smug Mug to print? So the cool thing with Smug Mug is that there, they, um, They've got everything calibrated for you. You upload your files into SmugMug. And when I was there a year or so ago, um, I presented for them. And they literally, I think it's something like 28. When you upload one file, it gets made into 28 different versions. One for iPhone, like this, like this, iPad, this, this, that screen, this screen. And then they calibrate the whole thing. So if you upload the image with the colors correct to SmugMug, the prints will be sweet. They are phenomenal. Really, really good. And the printers that they use also very nice. Um, Shazmin, how do we know if the image is too pixelated or, or good to print? I'm gonna go there right after this. I'm gonna show you to, how to calculate size. All right. Can you save and print tips from SmugMug? Yes, you can, asks Grace. Fiona, why do you export not print directly from the Lightroom module? So Fiona, it is powerful. You would have seen in my Lightroom, I actually took the print uh, modules away. It is, it works, it's very basic and for standard. If you're just gonna print, for example, a normal photo paper, right? Matte, glossy, it's fine. It does a pretty decent job. I want to have more control over that final product, save it and then go from there. But printing from there, absolutely nothing wrong with it. I'm just maybe old school and I like to have a little bit more control and that final finesse, which um, that output chop and it gives me wonderfully well. Um, Jennifer asks, why did you have to get to Nick through Photoshop? Can't you run directly from Lightroom? You absolutely can. So in Lightroom, and I'll show you quickly if you want, you just go right click, go to there. It'll then open the TIFF for you after it's been saved. 
and then you just run it straight through the export without anything else. You can, absolutely. What I do like about doing it in Photoshop and go and watch the one with layers, right? Is if you have the top sharpening layer, yeah? And the image below, I can still drop the opacity and blend the sharpness back if I feel it's too strong. So that is an option as well. Um, Shazmi, should we stick to inkjet printing? Always not necessary. Um, Shazmi, what I would suggest is start like that, start like that. And then as you learn, go deeper and deeper. Uh, Jennifer, when printing on metal, what paper option would you choose? Okay, so the cool thing that they're doing these days, printing on metal, printing on wood, like printing on wood like this, um, it's pretty cool, especially if you have, um, the one cool thing they do with metal prints is they take the white ink out, right? So anywhere where there's pure white, the metal shines through. Or if there's shades of white, the metal kind of shines through. Really cool effect. I'm guessing you will not be printing metal at home. If you do, your printer will have settings for that. So paper option would be metal, but your printer would have to give that to you, if you know what I mean. But definitely worth a look. Have seen some phenomenal stuff printed on metal. How do you decide if an image is good enough to print? Ask Charlotte. Um, it's your choice. It's your image. If you like it printed, screw what anybody else, what anybody, what anybody else thinks. Yeah. Um, if you want to sell it, obviously maybe a different story, but still you need to be true to you. Charlotte, if you like it, give it a go. And if nobody buys it, give it away at Christmas. Really cool. Elaine, once you have output sharpened, which setting would you use to save it for further printing in Photoshop? So once I save in Photoshop, it'll give me the two layers. I will compress them and I'll save it as a TIFF file with the same settings as Lightroom. TIFF file, um, 16 bit and non compressed, and then save it from the Adobe RGB as well. So, exactly the same. Um, how do you know how big you can print shooting for uh, micro four thirds? Joe, I'm going to show you that, um, that, that, that calculation in a second. Um, and Alyssa, do you calibrate max screens? We have in the past, especially the older machines, but they tend to be really true to real life. They tend to be really, really true, right? Um, uh, asks, do you also take your own core on the type of paper, like choosing something um, for the DMAX value, etc.? I'm a fan of Han Mule, which the 380 gram, um, 380 GSM, really nice. Um, but there are many, many options that you can look at. So for, for home, if you get a Han Mule, I can send you the link, 380 GSM, phenomenal fine art printer or paper, and very easy to use. Very, very to use. Vikram, same answer. What textured paper would you recommend for black and white print? That 380 gram Mule sings. It is a phenomenal piece of paper. Um, if you do, Alyssa asks, if you do output sharpening and Nick filters, do you skip it in Lightroom? Yes. So if you do output sharpening in Lightroom, uh, in Nick, do not do it at the export phase of, of Lightroom. Barbara asks, what about printing on glass? Same thing. Very cool to do. And the printers who can do that will tell you exactly It'll still be a TIFF file, um, still large, but they will tell you if there's anything else needed. Um, let's see, Anne asks, I don't have a printer, but I send my photos to post it or go to a Photoshop and four is more. Is there a better place to print in Joburg? Yo, Anne, not really, hey. Um, Postnet, I actually know the owner of, of um, the Postnet in four is more there as well. They do very good prints, but uh, print wild online, very good. And if you're looking for fine art prints, uh, send me a mail and I can send you a guy in Port Elizabeth. Phenomenal turnaround. They ship worldwide. Some of the best I've seen. Really good. Um, and Alyssa asked, last one for now, for prints from home, which distance option in viewing do you normally use to be safe? For home, most of this, I use the 1.8 to 3 meter viewing distance for most rooms. Unless you have a big ass house with very big walls, you might go further. But 1.8 meter to 3 meters normally works quite well. Okay, so guys, what I'm going to quickly show you now, just to answer quite a few of those questions, is how to determine how big you can print an image. So I'm going to first take you to Lightroom for a second here. Okay, uh, where is Lightroom, Lightroom, Lightroom? There we go. Okay, um, cancel that one. All right, uh, just confirm for me, please, guys, you can see my Lightroom. There's a lot of screens open on my computer here. Okay. Okay. 
So, we can see it, yes. So, when we are looking at the size of a print, once you finish your thing, you've cropped it, everything, before you export, once you're in this main view and you hit I on the keyboard, right? It gives you that info at the top. Okay, thanks for joining. Chat later, bye. Um, up here, 5504-6880. This is the dimension of your print. Okay, that is how big that print is. Now, if you want to print, there will be very generic options that they can give it to you. So, if I then look at the size of a crop, let me just go here. These options here are generally print sizes that people will be able to do for you. So whether you're doing it online or printing it yourself, four by five, eight by 10, pretty stock standard kind of image sizes, right? So now remember this, you need to know this on your image. So, and if you guys start Googling this, there's a load of this, right? Is if you go to something like this website, right? I can mail this to you if you want, email me. So here you can say, for example, right, to print, I want to print an eight by 10 inches, or you can do millimeters. So put the size of your print in there. This has to be 300 DPI for print and then say compute. You have to have at least two, four by 3000 pixels. Yeah. So let's say we're going to go bigger. If I want to do a 24 by 36 at 300 compute. Now look at what you start needing here. Okay. Now this is a lot of pixels. You do get upsizing software. I'll look at that in a different webinar when we look at plugins and stuff. But this is important to know. This is important to know. There's many of these calculators. If you guys, I can send this to you on an email. Drop me a mail tomorrow. But this here gives you a pretty solid indication, right, of what kind of size you would need. 20 by 30, common one that people want to do. 6,000 by 9,000. That's a big print. And if you want detailed resolution, guys, you can get away with less pixels. You really, really can, right? But if you want to do this properly, that's where you want to get to. And like I said, there is upsizing software. I've got the one which is phenomenal. I'm not going to do it, go there now, separate webinar maybe. But this here, very handy to know what you are dealing with from a sizing point of view. Okay. Um, any questions so far? Any questions so far? Let me pop back here quickly. Um, for print at home, can you spell the paper type? I'm gonna quickly put that in the comments for you. I think I have it right here. Uh, ba -ba All right, anybody keen on the name? I'm gonna put this in the chat quickly. The type of paper that I quite enjoy uh, in my chat. Here we go. So this here, and it's a 380 uh, GSM. That paper there, I've just put it in the chat, is phenomenal. Absolutely, absolutely. It's um, fine art, museum quality. It lasts forever. If you, if you take care of it and you gloss it and frame it, it carries texture and color beautifully. Really, really highly recommended. Okay, so last one quickly is I'm gonna take you to over the years, right, is, I've given prints away online because it's not my game to sell prints. I love the printing things and I love giving it away. But I, for example, on Christmas, I give prints away, right? So I'm going to quickly take you to the, um, I'm going to take you to my Smug Mug account to prints. And these are some of the ones that people have requested over time, most over time. So if you have any other questions, drop it in the Q and A. We'll come back after this. But let's just have a quick look and we'll talk through just very quickly some of them. So what you're seeing here now, this is my, where is it? Too many screens open. There we go. Um, this is my smug mug. And this is the, the prints that I have over time been requested the most. So for different reasons, I suppose. Now, each to his own. There's no rule that says you can't print absolutely anything and put it on your wall. But if you look through here, elephant portrait, this, nice and big, uh, the Christmas giveaway. I'll, I'm going to get there, Ruben. Good question. Something like the giraffe, nice and plain and simple. Negative space for prints works beautifully well. 
abstracts. For me, this polar bear here, beautiful image, but print-wise, very specific use, okay? Something like this, neat and clean, Flamingo Reflection, Vic Fall, big print, something like this. This to me says big print in quite a big way, right? Welcome to African um, internet speeds, nice and slow. So something like that prints really well. And when I give them away digitally, you'll see what I do. I put the white frame around and I just put my name at the bottom. Okay, but something like this speaks well to being printed. Um, this one here, it's from uh, Big Sky Country. Where was that from? Uh, Utah, Wild Horses, looks good in big print. Something like this as a fine art print, really nice. Um, like I said, these are ones that have been requested over time. Love the elephant foot, right? Um, I can actually, I'll put this gallery for you guys in the chat function as well. Um, if you want to go and check it out, just as some ideas. But all of these have been requested for prints time and time again for some reason. I'm particularly drawn to ones like this, which have a lot of negative space. Prints like this speak to me. It's allowing the eye to wander through the frame and then come to the subject. I love images like this. Abstracts, things like this. This is the top of a, of a mountain in Svalbard. Beautiful haze. So the abstract side of nature also prints really well. Um, something like this, pretty straightforward, but also prints well because of the simplicity. Often with prints, don't go too advanced. Keep it simple and it works really well. So just some ideas. Um, this is one of the ones I have in my home. It's just up on the television there, but I've got this in black and white. Again, simplicity, shapes, space for the eyes to move around the frame. Simplicity wins every single time. Okay, so almost out of time here. I'm gonna quickly go to Q&A and how do we add the white border? Okay, do you guys want me to quickly show you how to add the white border? And I'll quickly go Q&A and we'll do that. Okay. Um, okay, I've seen the question there as well. Okay, um, we'll do that now. Uh, Roderick asked, if you take into account viewing distance, you can get away with so much lower resolution. Absolutely. So you can print lower resolution the further away it is. Some print shops say you can go as low as 100. Absolutely. Depending on how far you're going to go from the print. Okay, guys, I'm going to show you um, two ways to add a white border. I'm going to use Photoshop for this particular reason. One of them you can do inside of um, inside of, 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 of Lightroom. Okay, so if you do this in Photoshop, simple way is you finish your image. You make it finished and clear. Then you're going to go image, canvas, and you click on that. You give this a percentage. Okay, and because this is almost a square image, I'm going to, for example, say, let's do 15 and 15%. What this means, this dot in the middle is my image and it's gonna add 15% in all directions and it's gonna be white. When I hit okay, there it is. So now if you save the image, that's my image. So for example, if you wanna maybe build up a border to get to your pixel level, you can do that. Um, and then what you can do then is just find the right text and you can just put your name. If you want nice fonts, I can send you those as well, but you put your name at the bottom and you can save it like that. That's the one way, okay. Guys, happy for that. Super simple. Canvas, percent, open up. Let me just undo this. Um, if you want to do different, so if you do image, canvas, same thing. And I'm going to do, if I want to offset it, I would go maybe, let's call it, I don't know, five and five percent. So it's much smaller. I then do this again, uh, canvas size. But this time, I'm only going to go. So I put my image at the top. And on height, I say, give me another, I don't know, eight. And it'll only go there. So then I've got that kind of idea. So if you want to have a slightly bigger bar at the bottom, just run it square, make sure it's the same, and then add a little bit of extra. And then you can stick your name in there. Okay, so that's the one way. Super easy. The other one, and this works if you're doing black and whites, is you do it right inside of Nick Filters, which is Silver Effects. Okay, so quickly opening that up. Okay, sorry guys, just one more time, confirm. Can you see my black and white image here? Please say yes, all right, done. So, if you're gonna do a black and white, right at the bottom, 
it has image borders down here on the right. Here, I literally just select one. It's got kind of funky ones as well. Um, things like that. So I select that and then I can export. This then puts it back into Photoshop with that frame that looks like that. Okay. So those two, guys, they are bored. You can buy apps and plugins that does all of that. But inside of Photoshop and, 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 and Silver Effect, you should be able to come right with the majority of that. Okay, I'm just quickly dropping back in here. Please show how in Lightroom. Okay, there you would have to use the print module. Um, guys, we're almost out of time. We've got the frame. Um, if it's your first time printing, ask Charlotte, do you recommend getting someone to help you through it? Or do you recommend trying to learn yourself? Um, the answer is both. The answer is both. Charlotte, if you want to print, right, um, message me on Instagram. I know we follow each other. We can meet up for a quick 15-minute Zoom. I'll talk you through it, and then you go and try it. Easy as that. That's the cool thing. Guys, sorry, I'm out of time. I have to get going this time because I have another webinar in about 12 minutes, which I've got just set up for. Um, email me if you want me to go deeper. We just scratched the surface here. If you want me to go deeper, please send me an email, and we'll go deeper next time. Deeper next time. It's fun. Please print. If you're going to give them away for Christmas, like someone asked earlier on, either go A4, just this size. Just do that. If you want to spend more money, that's cool. Go bigger. But give your stuff away. Don't let it sit on your hard drive. Print it. Make it real. Make it real. All right. Guys, if I might see some of you in the next webinar. I don't know. Otherwise, wherever in the world you are, good morning, good evening, and good night. Um, follow me on Instagram. Let's chat there. And I will see you in the next episode. Happy printing. Cheers, guys. My name is Jerry. I'm from Wild Eye. Bye-bye.